Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna do a real world example of what is quant dev. So quickly, um, quantitative researchers model developers or those building strategies. I don't really care how efficient you are, I just need to come up with really good um, models for actually modeling things. Uh, quant dev is going to be the implementation piece, so you can consider this the same as like ML ops or DevOps, except for the fact that you need heavy amounts of math to optimize. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick problem here, real world, to show you guys a little bit of the nuanced details and why math is preferred um, for optimization of code and implementation of modeling um, versus like the brute force of like every, I don't know, ops person I've met uh, typically runs to like, how do you optimize the computer side of it, uh, not how to optimize the math side of it. I think this is what really stands differently for um, quant devs is that they are supposed to be kind of like DevOps or ML ops people, but have really, really strong mathematical backgrounds and understand finance here in the quant space here. So let's just start off with here. Um, this problem is a real world problem that I assigned to an employee. I will not go over any solutions for this, um, but essentially you have a loan, okay? Um, and what we look at a loan with is that you have some loan, let's say it's some payment, let's say it's $400 for the payment, um, and then you have months down here. So you make a payment at one, two, three, all the way out. Uh, let's say, I don't know, this is like a 60 month loan here. So this is equal to, you know, five years. Um, the payments though, the way they work is that in the first payment, the way the calculations are done, so, if you want a little primer here, you need to understand why you need to know finance. Anyways, you're gonna to need to know how to do the payment calculation here. Just this gives you some background understanding uh, of where uh, this $400 comes from. Uh, but in finance terms, right, the, the payment of a loan is going to be equal to um, your interest or your rate per period. So it's like your interest rate, your APR, uh, times the present value period, um, divided by one, minus one plus R to the negative N here. So let's just quickly define these. Um, R is going to be your APR. Uh, they call this per period. So APR is annual percentage rate. You divide that by 12. That gives you your R here. Um, and then PV is going to be um, present value in finance terms. Let's say we're doing an auto loan though. This is going to be considered um, amount financed. Um, and then in here is going to be the number of months. Okay, so anyways, you you can you can do all this. This is simple math. Uh, you can do it in Excel as well. Um, but more or less what we're trying to get to is we're trying to get to um, payment here. And payment here is going to be $400. And every single uh, payment is going to be $400. So the problem I'm trying to solve here is going to be um, what is the ratio uh, of principal... Uh, to payment here. So I'll write it out. And I want an equation uh, such that f of x, so some sort of equation here, is going to take into it um, term and APR, and it's going to give me this ratio, okay? So this is, you know, I don't know. This is my ratio here. Bianco's or fancy quant here. Let's just put fancy quants ratio, and this is what I need here, okay? Let me go back here to the financial theory a little bit. Um, when you make your first payment, this has the smallest amount of principal out of all your payments. And then as you go to period two, you pay a little bit more um, principal and a little bit more principal, a little bit more principal until you get to like the very end here. And I'm gonna redraw this curve so you can get a better understanding of why this is a little bit challenging here. And so what I'm really trying to figure out is I want this curve, which is more or less this ratio here, which we're gonna convert. Um, I want this value. So maybe this is like $100 in the first period and 300 in the second period. This is going to be 100 over 400, which is going to be equal to, you know, 0.25. And then we go into the second period, you know, it might be like, um, I don't know, like 0.267. And then as you go out along this curve, uh, it's going to give you this. Now I want, let's go back to here. I want a math equation to quickly do this because I'll explain how I've done this for model development. So you get an idea of the fact that I am a model developer typically and not a quant dev. 
Um, so the way we do this typically here is we're going to take out uh, your starting balance and we're going to do an amortization table. Okay, and if you, you, you can, you know, go online, use the Google machine, figure this out. But more or less, you have your starting balance. Let's say it's a $10,000 loan. Um, let's say we'll put APR up here. I don't know, like 15%. Uh, and we'll do term, as we mentioned before, is going to be five years, which is, you know, 60 months. And if my math is correct, because I'm using a little app here to do this quickly, um, your payment amount, so from that payment equation, will give you $237.90 here, okay? And so what you do is to figure out, you know, my question being is I need to find the principal amount. So we're gonna have to calculate out the interest first, and then we're gonna calculate out the principal. So we'll take uh, our original principal balance here. So we'll call this a balance. It's called starting balance. And so we'll take $10,000 and we'll multiply it uh, by our 15% divided by 12 months. And this is going to give us $125. So what this means is we start out with $10,000, call this balance, uh, and then we know that the interest is going to be 125. Uh, our principal is now going to be uh, 237.9 minus that 125, and our principal amount is going to be 112.90. Now we're gonna get our new balance, so I'm gonna call it, I don't know, ending, end balance and our ending balance is going to be the beginning balance so ten thousand dollars minus the principal amount here which is this you know 112.90 and that's going to give us a new ending balance of nine thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and ten cents and now we start that over again so this is month one so i'll call this months on book uh, month two, now we're going to take the ending balance from here and we're going to move it down here and we're going to have 9,887.10. And now we're going to multiply that um, by, our, again, our fraction of uh, 0.15 divided by 12. And now our new interest payment is going to be 123.59. And then again, to get the principal, we're going to take um, our payment amount here of 237.90 and we're going to minus out from that our 123.59 and this is going to give us 114.31 and now to get the ending balance we're going to take the original balance of $9,887 um, and we're going to minus out our $114 here of that principal again and we're going to have 9,772.79 Anyways, if you do this all the way to the bottom, when we get to term 60, there's gonna be some sort of payment made and the ending balance is going to be zero dollars here. So again, what we're trying to solve, so going back to that original sheet, is I just want uh, this ratio right here. I just want the principal to payment amount. So when we go back here, you can see I can easily get this, this piece here because all I have to do is take this column, the principal amount, and just divide it, so do principal, divided by um, our payment amount. And as a note here, because someone's gonna point it out, uh, principal is spelled principal with an A-L. Anyways, I know someone's gonna point this out. But anyways, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get uh, the principal uh, over payment here because this is a ratio that I need uh, for our work project or a top secret project here. Um, and so I need this. And so what I'm currently doing is just generating this table for every single loan. Well, when you're doing 100,000 loans, uh, you can see that, again, I'm writing all this in Python here. So it creates the code, uh, pulls in, again, our APR, pulls in our term and months, uh, pulls in again the, the balance here of this loan. And then it's going to go and do the calculation of the payments. And then it puts the payments in, you know, does the, the amortization table that's fancy schmancy here, and it does all these calculations, it pulls it out. Well, it takes too long, and I don't want it to take that long. And so again, this is functional. This is what quantitative researchers or model developers, you know, real quants here, model development here, that are doing uh, model development are doing, is they're just trying to get to some solution. And this little tiny piece fits into this massive modeling project that I'm working on.
And so just back to the simple solution, what I want is I want to be able to take, again, some equation f of x, which I'll more appropriately write uh, f of, and then we'll put in, you know, APR and term. Uh, it needs to be some sort of math equation here. So just as we saw earlier, if we pull up on the screen here, um, just we saw earlier, you know, the, the calculation for payment here, right? Um, this, this little R here is technically, you know, APR divided by 12. Um, and then in here is going to be what we call, what I call term. So we need some sort of equation like this to get to that. Now, the reason you can't just do a regression with this, at least in simple terms, um, is that there is actually convexity in, in this line, right? It, it creates um, a curvature. So if it was a straight linear line, uh, that'd be pretty easy to figure out. And so every single loan is going to be different and unique. Uh, and the fact that the, the term piece needs to change, needs to adapt. But I want a fast, quick math equation here. I don't need like a unique formula. So let's say, I don't know, you had, um, let's say Dimitri's ratio here is going to be equal to, um, I don't need something such that's like alpha plus beta one uh, APR um, plus beta two, I don't know, like term. And you're probably going to have to square one of these so you can get, you know, some curvature in here, some convexity. Uh, I don't need it so that the beta 1 and beta 2 and the alphas are unique uh, to, to every loan. What we need is I need a unified, uh, some sort of general equation such that uh, it just generates this piece here. And I hope you guys understand this, right? I mean, doing the amortization table is the correct mathematical way to logically work your way through it from a financial perspective, a traditional finance perspective here, right? Model development, it's fine. Just go ahead, build in inefficiencies. Just make sure the, 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 the thing you're modeling here, the bigger picture, which I'm not showing you guys, this black box I'm modeling within is actually working here. Uh, but in our case, you know, DevOps is supposed to be optimization. We're trying to optimize this here. Now you could try to optimize this in rewriting the code in different ways here. So just as a few examples, uh, one of them is I'm writing this really inefficiently in pandas inside of Python here. So pandas is just slower than slow, let me tell you. Um, so most code I write in uh, pandas, I need to quickly build a model. When I actually have to go to do DevOps on it and I have to actually optimize the code for that, uh, I'm actually going in and writing that with NumPy arrays because NumPy arrays are much faster uh, at the calculations than the pandas here. Now there are ways you can you can Google guys Google on there. You can look at ways to make pandas more efficient. Um, you could do parallel computing. We could set this up such that uh, we had two parallel processes running at the same time. Uh, we could split out the loans to be calculated. So say there's a hundred thousand loans. Let's say we're running parallel with two separate processors here. Uh, we could set half on a processor that's going to be doing 50,000 loans and half on swing another 50,000. Why? Because at the end of the day, uh, you could simply, this is a great example of parallelization where each process is running independently. So each one can be done independently. And at the end, you can merge them all back together. Now, the reason I don't like this solution per se is because it's expensive. Uh, it's computationally expensive in this fact that you have to pay for multiple servers and optimize all these, you know, the computer science stuff all around this. These are going to be things that we consider, at least in my opinion, the way quant dev should be done. That's something you do at the end here. A math equation makes it very efficient. So this, this beautiful math equation, right? When you guys understand this, quant dev, the beauty of quant dev is it's teaming mathematics up with computer science here. It's putting the two halves together here. Um, I like to do it first off, so for quant dev, as a final note here, uh, I like to optimize such that we do the mathematics first because math is beautiful, it is simple, it is elegant, uh, and it is very fast on its own right, and it's cheap. Once I have a really small, simple math equation, I can run on any machine, any processor, and get an answer almost instantly. We're talking like you know, nanoseconds of differences we're arguing over here. It doesn't matter to parallel in this instance. Um, this is very efficient and cost effective. So this is why math is preferred. Now, the second approach is, you know, using, I'm going to call it computer science, um, but this is things like parallel 
uh, processing, um, and there are other things you can do. Um, but also, you know, you can also put this into another language sometimes if you're needing to really optimize down. Uh, big surprise to most of you here, uh, C Sharp uh, or C++ is very common because they're low-level languages. They're much faster than Python. Uh, I don't care what people tell me online and the forms that are, you know, sitting at home. Uh, C++ and C Sharp are going to be much, much faster here. But if you do it in this process, you can mathematically simplify it down. Sometimes you can get away with not even having to do step two because it runs fast enough for your needs. Um, and then if you really need to optimize, so if you're, I don't work in high frequency trading, but if you worked in high frequency trading, uh, what you'd want to do is then go and put it into a lower, lower level language like a C language here. Even the big, massive global banks that are doing loans like this, they're writing everything in C sharp for the most part because we're all Windows operations, which is why it's sharp. Um, but C sharp is much, much faster than any other language that we would be using um, to develop models like SAS or R or Python. Um, so for those reasons, that's why we do it here. But I hope you guys got a good takeaway in this of seeing and understanding um, if we had the equation, if you have the solution here and you can run it, uh, you can quickly just generate with a few inputs, like you know two values, uh, APR and term here, and you can generate it with some math structure, of course, around it, some coefficients and whatnot. You can generate this curve um, such that you can calculate it in just a really, really simple, fast calculation instead of going back through uh, that very tedious amortization process and creating a whole other table with columns and all these extra values just for one loan. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you did find this helpful and unique and different from what else is on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button below. Uh, give me a like or a thumbs up if you found it helpful and put some comments too as well if you're interested in learning a little bit more. But as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.